Hey everyone, welcome to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert, and today is day 15 of March Malt Madness. We've reached the halfway point of the month, 15 out of 31 uh, videos. And tonight we have, in our next to last matchup in round one, a matchup between a Highland whiskey, the Deanston 12 year old, and an unpeated Isla whiskey, the Brook Lottie, the Classic Laddie. Uh, both of these whiskeys have very good reputations and when I tell you the details about how they're made You'll understand why that's the case. Both of them are doing just about everything you can do right uh, The Deanston as I mentioned is from the Highlands This is not available in North Carolina Unfortunately, but it is only $50 compared to some of the hundred dollar bottles. We've been talking about it is completely ex-bourbon barrel mature. This is a no-nonsense whiskey. It goes into ex-bourbon barrels and stays there for at least 12 years. It's bottled at 46.3% alcohol by volume, ABV. Uh, it's not chill filtered. There's no added color. Like I said, they're just doing everything right. The Brook Lottie, on the other hand, it's also doing everything right, but it's doing some amazing things that I wasn't even aware of when I first discovered this whiskey. Um, the Classic Laddie is their unpeated Isla expression. Brook Lottie also makes some of the most powerful peated whiskeys on the planet, the Octomore series, but this is unpeated. It's only $55. So this is what you would call a terrifically value-laden bargain, top quality whiskey round. $55, it is available here in North Carolina. Surprise, surprise. It is not age stated, and I think you'll understand why in a few minutes when I tell you some more details. It's bottled at 50% alcohol by volume, so a little bit more of a punch than almost any of the other core range bottlings we've talked about. It is um, matured in a variety of American oak casks, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And of course, it's from the uh, Isle of Isla, and so it's, it's matured right by the sea, and there is a salty sea influence in this whiskey. Brook Lottie is all about the barley and the blend of barley with different types of casks. Each bottle that you buy has a batch code on the bottom of the bottle, and you can go to the Brook Lottie website, I did this today, and type it in, and it pulls up an extensive information sheet telling you everything that was done to this whiskey except for how long it stays in the barrels because I think it stays in different barrels different lengths of time, which is why they probably don't put an age statement on it. The way the age statement regulations work is if you say it's a 10 year old whiskey, every drop of whiskey in that bottle has to be at least 10 years old. And so if you're using a bunch of different types of maturations for some different lengths than others, you tend to go away from that age statement because you might have some three year whiskey, which is the minimum to be whiskey in Scotland, mixed in with some 12 year whiskey. You can't call it a 12 because of the younger stuff, but you don't want to call it a three because there's older stuff. So they just go without an age statement. And that's becoming more of a trend, I think, in recent years as distillers are playing with different kinds of, of mixes and matches and maturation. So this is from batch 21 slash 090. I'm guessing that means from September of 2021 it, it does say definitely it was distilled in 2021 but when you pull that batch up online it tells you that this is a vatting of 82 different casks which isn't that unusual it's a lot of casks but four different vintages of whiskey so four different age groups three different barley types and 12 different cask types and you think well that's a lot of information and then you scroll down the page and you realize it tells you what each of those 82 casks is, where the barley comes from, whether it's Isla barley or whether it's barley from the mainland and the type of cask. So if it's, uh, you know, an ex bourbon hog's head, it, it tells you how many casks were that type. Where did that barley come from for all 82 casks? And I'm not a huge 
distillery facts nerd, but I thought that was pretty cool to look through. So regardless of whether I choose this whiskey tonight or not, and I have no idea because I, I like both of these, but I am really blown away by the level of transparency that Brook Lottie puts on his website for you to learn about how they make their whiskey. And this is just one of their core line. They have a lot of whiskeys that are on their website. Anyway, so that's some of the information I learned today that I thought was really kind of interesting. So a completely ex-bourbon maturation against a very extensive collection of different types of maturation all mixed together and bottled at 50% alcohol by volume and still only for $55. That's kind of blows my mind a little bit, but don't tell Brook Lottie, they'll raise the prices. Okay, let's start with the Deanston since that's the simplest and probably the one that'll be the most familiar. Oh, right from the start, you get that gorgeous vanilla probably honey. I can sense a little fruit, but I couldn't identify what fruit it is. Often with, with bourbon maturation, I'll get maybe some, some apples, um, occasionally some citrus fruit, but this, this seems more like apples than citrus fruit to me. Oh, it's very nice. And this one is bottled at 46.3%, which is awesome because that allows them not to chill filter and allows them to you know, avoid anything artificial. There's no artificial color. And if you'll notice, these are not the two darkest whiskeys that we have uh, seen. In fact, the classic Laddie is really pretty pale. No one cares. No one who truly loves the taste of the whiskey cares what color it is. And so by them being all natural about it, they don't have to strip any of those flavors away using chill filtration. So much better for the, for the whiskey enthusiast. Okay, I have a slight confession to make. The first bottle of Deanston I ever tried was their virgin oak bottle. Um, so it's not refilled bourbon barrel maturation. It's brand new oak. And then I tried this, and I think I've only tried this one time. I wasn't crazy about it that first time I tried it, but coming back to it now, it's terrific. There is this thing called the neck pour, and I never know whether to believe it or not, but some people swear that the first pour out of any bottle can be weird because there's not very much oxygen in the bottle to interact with the whiskey yet. And so that first pour might be a little wonky. And then if you let it sit for a couple of weeks or months and come back to it and that it, there's more air in the bottle and it's had more of a chance to interact with the whiskey, it settles and it tastes different. And this does not taste like what I remember that first pour tasting like. So maybe there's something to that theory. I don't know if scientifically it's true or whether it's an old wives tale or whatever, but uh, in some cases I have noticed a big difference between the first pour and my next experience with a whiskey. And this one is so much better now. The same aromas that I got when I sniffed it are carrying through to the taste. It's vanillas and honey, sweetness. It's not spiky or sharp at all. Um, it's just, it's very, very balanced and full bodied. It's very nice. Okay. So the tasting notes that I saw on both of these bottles. Mo both of them mentioned that you can taste barley sugar or the malting tastes like cereal to some degree. I've never gotten that note from scotch. It may be just that I'm not familiar with what they're referring to, but I don't get that on these whiskeys either. Uh, but I am getting that full bodied um, vanilla honey sweetness. Okay, let's go to the Brook Lottie. 
Well, that has a different, different nose to it. Sorry, I said nose, minus five. Hmm. You can tell that's not just bourbon maturation. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. And I can, I can get a little sense of the, the by the sea influence too. I have no idea what this is going to taste like. It's been a while since I've had it. This is one that also mentions the barley, sugar, um, and sweet malt. And I am getting a sense of sweetness and it does taste or it smells kind of like cereal. So maybe that's what they're talking about. Let's see what it tastes like. Excuse me, that went down the wrong pipe. Let's try that again without choking myself. <clears throat> it's different, but I can't tell what's different about it. <clears throat> It may be that there's so many different things going on in there that I'm having trouble pinpointing any of them. There is this balance between kind of a fruit <clears throat> and that sea spray influence. Okay, we have a winner. And this surprises me, <clears throat> but I'm gonna advance the Deanston 12. I was not coming into this round with high hopes for the Deanston because of what I told you before. I didn't have a great first experience with it, but it's very balanced. It's very full bodied. Um, it feels good from start to finish when you taste it. The Brook Lottie's got something in there I'm not sure what it is, whether it's some of the, maybe there's some sherry influence that I didn't like the way it went, or there's some other things going on in there that it's not to me, it's not to my flavor profile, even though I can tell it's really well made. It's not as enjoyable to me as the Deanston. And so the Deanston 12 is going to advance and I'll just have to enjoy the Brook Lottie on my own. Okay, so that's it for day 15. The final matchup in round one tomorrow is between a Nock 12 year old, which is from the Nock Du distillery, and the granddaddy of Isla's, the Lagavulin 16 year old, Nick Offerman's favorite whiskey, if you're following along with TV pop culture. So that's tomorrow, a Nock 12 and Lagavulin 16. All right, <clears throat> I survived even though I tried to choke myself. Brooke Lottie nearly killed me. Um, both of these are terrific, and this is a perennial favorite among a lot of people. This, I didn't know at all, so I didn't know what to expect from it, uh, but I'm very pleasantly surprised. And so, Deanson it is. Have a great evening, everybody. Drop me a comment below, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>